Hey, what's up? I'm Al Cox. I make games, play games, and everything in between. And today, we're gonna go over getting rejected by the App Store. Nobody likes to get rejected. If you've ever submitted a game on the App Store, then you've been <laughs> rejected plenty of times. Every time I submit to the App Store, I just think I'm gonna get rejected for an unknown reason. And sometimes the reasons are so obvious I didn't even see it. I thought we would go over this game I made while on vacation. When I submitted it to the App Store for some updates and published it, I kept getting issues and I didn't know why. If you like this kind of content, don't forget to like and subscribe below. One of my favorite things about using Buildbox to make games is the process you go through to submit games on the App Store and the Play Store, which is a crucial part the most crucial part. Yeah, it's part of the process. You just gotta work your way through it to get to the point where you just know that eventually your game will be on the App Store and then then you gotta worry about trying to get people to download it. I use Buildbox, which is a no-code software to make my games. It's pretty straightforward when it comes to going through the process of submitting it and then having the game on the App Store. Today, we're just gonna be covering the App Store but I hope to make future ones where I go into the Play Store more because I know I need that experience more. And I almost try to gamify everything I do as in experience points. Like how much experience points do I have? When you gamify your life in a way that reminds you of like playing Warcraft back in the day, it just makes everything more achievable and you know you're gonna get there eventually, but this is like that grinding period where you just figure out how to get things done, be efficient. I always try to detach myself from the games I make because I hit roadblocks. We just get extremely frustrated when you make a game you can get lost in just wanting that one single game to succeed and your whole world becomes this one game. That's, <laughs> that's not what I want. I want to get good at making games over and over and over and over and over again. Like that, that's my goal. I made this game when I was on vacation. I wasn't even planning on making the game, which is a weird thing to say out loud, but I made it. Let me actually show you the game right now. I did take an extra day or two to polish things because this game won like coolest movement technique for a game jam. I upgraded a couple of things like the movement of the character. It's a little bit too much right now, but going in, making quick updates, updating the app store, that's something I could literally do right now in under 10 minutes. So that is like a really cool thing to know. But once I submit it to the app store, if it gets rejected, that's very common. That depends on the game and I'm kind of casting a wide net, but to be fair, sometimes I'm just doing the bare minimum. Like the transitions between the main UI and the game and the game over there. Like I said, for this game, I made it in about five days. I was going to the beach, I was tanning. The priority was to complete it and finish it. It wasn't to make everything perfect on perfect. This is the game and even here, the, the button is like not even working. Like I don't even, so confusing. It works on the phone. It works on my phone, but I don't know if this is the software or if this is me or why this does not work. I can't even continue to test this game. So that's kind of probably a problem. I think this is a good example because there's always something wrong and there's always something I'm not sure about. Let's take a look at the App Store Connect and the process. Once you get the game in Xcode, I usually do one thing or two things. I add code to stop music so that if you're listening to Spotify, the game doesn't stop the music you're listening to. I hate when that happens. And then I delete some like tracking data that Buildbox has in there to, I have no idea, I delete it, so. And here we can see that on February 17th, I had submitted the game and it took a long time for it to go into review. Let's just say that was my fault. Nobody's perfect. I was probably changing a bunch of things. Here it goes into review and then it's finished. So there's no problem. So this is the best result. I mean, maybe not this time frame. I would say 
within like five days, it's good to be finished. Once it went into review, it was done. Get a little confident and start making updates. And this is kind of where I would like to be is knowing that I can go into any of the games I've made in the past, spend a day making it better, polishing, whatever, and submitting it to the app store and hoping that there'll be no problem. But here we get to version 1.02 and we can see I got metadata rejection. I'm getting rejected and rejected and rejected. Developer reject. Nobody likes to be rejected. Our first version had got accepted with no problems. I should also mention that there's no ads in this game. Do I have ads in this game? I don't even know if I have ads. I don't think I have ads. I think I would know if I had ads in this game. I should put ads in this game. Anyways, <laughs> the updated version, version 101, this is not a good sequence, but here there was a pending agreement issue. And this was the warning that I got. We found that your in-app purchase products exhibited one or more bugs when reviewed on iPad running iOS 14 on Wi-Fi. Now this is what all the reviews are done in by Apple is the latest iPads. A good test is to just see if you can do the purchase on your phone and if you can, send them a screenshot of you being able to do that and then you're good to go. Now I've done this in the past and in the past it's gone through. However, this specific time when I tried it on my phone because I hadn't done that before because I just assumed everything would work, it didn't go through and I didn't know why. And it was because my Apple developer subscription had updated. And in that update, there was some like banking information that needed to be updated, but I didn't know that it needed to be updated and that the UI was a little confusing on how I went about updating it. So this took a couple of days for me. I couldn't figure it out. And now I wanna say this about the App Store Connect and Apple because I've been submitting mobile games to the App Store for the last three years. Their customer service has only gotten better. To be fair, I didn't even know that they had customer service. I wasn't even aware that was a thing. I looked at Apple like any kind of big company. They can't help you. They're not there to help you. <laughs> They're there for other reasons. But the customer support nowadays is helpful and I find myself willing to go back to it to get help because before I wouldn't do this and I think that's because it's like the go get it mental mind attitude I have in my head where if I can figure it out on my own then I know that trouble and difficulty it took for me to figure it out on my own will help me learn for the future and that is actually to me more valuable yeah, their customer support has been really helpful. There's been ways that I am able to talk to somebody, even just write messages back, and they can help explain what the problem is, and then I can solve it. This was just a licensing agreement. In my opinion, their UI is really bad, and I needed to click on an agreement that I didn't know I needed to click on and just basically hit check marks and agree. I was avoiding this for, it looks like, about 20 days. I basically found a phone number to call Apple's App Store Connect and within five minutes I was talking to somebody and they held my hand and we went through the horrible UI in agreement tax and banking. From there I was just able to find exactly where I needed to agree and my updated banking information was good to go. That's one of those problems that you just kind of push off until you can't move forward anymore. This game still has bugs when I test it. For example, I'll go to the end here and sometimes it won't continue to the up. So now it continues. So it, it wasn't doing that all the time. I, I don't always know what's my bad, what's BuildBox is bad, what's the Apple App Store connects bad. That's okay. You just do the best you can every step of the way. And so I went to submit it again and I got rejected. I thought it was due to the poor level of transitions between one scene to the next scene, which to be fair, I, I just did it really quick because 
for me, when I make a mobile game, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to go. I'm just trying to get it done and, and I figure it out later. So I kept making the transition smoother and better and submitting it. And it kept getting rejected, 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 rejected. What is it? One, two, three, four. By the fourth or fifth time, I was just kind of losing it. And the whole time I had never sent a message back because you have the opportunity to send a message saying, hey, what, what is going on? I just never did because I thought the problem was the transitions. So I spent hours fixing the transition so that they're smooth and better, like you just saw. Each time they had sent me a picture and they had sent me a picture of what they're playing on, which is in the iPad, look like this. Yeah, it actually looked like this. The continue wording and the level complete. Here you can see level complete and continue. You can't even read it. The error I got was something along the lines of bad UI. It was something about the UI and how things need to be conformed. And in my mind, I didn't understand because when I was testing in BuildBox, I would use this preview screen and it would show the continue and the level complete words not cut off and visible. But the picture that they sent over had shown the words continue and level complete cut off. I just didn't notice. I just completely missed the obvious. I do this sometimes. I, I get so into something else that I just miss the obvious. And I looked back at all these pictures and they showed that the continue was cut off and the level complete was cut off. The big thing here was I don't actually have an iPad to test. I mean, technically I can get one, but generally I don't actually test my games on an iPad. This was like a big obvious one that took me a week or two before I figured it out that it was my mistake, my bad. And I just took the UI where it says level complete and continue. And I put them so far in the middle that there's no way that they could get cut off by anything. You see, BuildBox is set up so that it works on everything from your original iPad to the latest iPad. This does kind of mess with the resolutions of how things look, depending on what device you're playing. And when you create a game, you need to keep this in mind because if you don't, then then it will come back to haunt you or maybe you'll never even know. But I always try to plan for it. And even then when I get rejected by Apple, I don't even see the obvious. Finally, with that out of the way, the game got good to go. And then it was meta rejected. After all that, that was from April 9th is when it finally got approved and I had began March 24th. I think that's like two weeks, maybe even three weeks of me just making all these changes and missing the obvious. But at the same time, let's be fair, I was making my game better. Like it's not like the game got worse. I was making the transitions better. I was making the ball movement and I was working on other games, which is something I've been getting more and more into because I can. And it's not like I'm working on a new game. I'm just making the old games a little bit better, but I got meta rejected. And this was the rejection that I got due to app tracking transparency. We're looking forward to completing the review of your app, but we need more information to continue. Specifically, we noticed that your app uses the app tracking transparency framework, but we haven't been able to locate relevant app tracking transparency permission requests. Okay, the most important thing to note here is I am using the latest build of BuildBox. I don't always use the latest build of BuildBox because I have trust issues, but presently this game is the latest. Not understanding what's going on, I reached out to a couple people and Sean at BuildBox, and he sent me a link that specifically talks about the iOS 14 privacy changes. This is actually just good information to read. Hands down, read this because it's good to understand all of it. Basically, when you load a game made by BuildBox on your phone, you get this allow IDFA to track your activity across other companies right here 
on your phone and then you say allow or not to track. That's what this app transparency tracking is all about. I had read this and it all made sense. What didn't make sense is Apple still rejected it. I didn't understand why they rejected it. So I went into BuildBox, I exported the game again, made a newer version and submitted it and it got rejected again. And I wasn't sure why because all this information is already in BuildBox. What I did was I literally just took a screenshot of this image right here and I said to them that the app tracking transparency privacy policy only loads on your first time and if it's your second time loading the app then you don't see it because as you remember I had already submitted the app and got it approved back at the beginning of March. If the same person is loading the game and they don't see that app tracking transparency, it's because they've already seen it. And I just put that into the message where they rejected it along with, I don't know what's going on. Is this my bad? You're bad. Buildbox is bad. But you know, I just try to include as much information and use that college degree to make it like a very good, well-rounded email. And then it got approved. This was a case where it's basically App Store Connect, not fully understanding that they had already seen the app transparency. Once they understood that, they approved it. So we got three cases of issues. What Murphy's Law, anything that can go wrong, will go wrong. First issue, billing issues, because my Apple developer account just got updated. I didn't know where to go. And I was able to talk to someone, which was really cool. So I'm now more open to write messages. I'm always saying thank you for your time. Thank you for your patience, because these dudes probably go through hundreds, if not thousands, uh, gotta be hundreds, games, apps a day, checking for all these things. Always be polite because they are the gatekeeper. The first issue was contracts and agreements, which to me was Apple's UI was just not clear and I needed somebody to help me. Second issue was my bad. And let's say BuildBox is bad in the preview because everything looked good in the preview, but I didn't test it on the iPad. So I wasn't aware that the words were cut off. And then when Apple sent me photos of the words being cut off, I just didn't see it because sometimes you can't see what's in front of you because you don't even know what you're supposed to be looking for. And then the third time was just Apple not being clear on the app tracking transparency that was already integrated in the latest build. Boldbox has already done that. What I really want is to just be able to go in, make changes, update a game, update this game, update that game. And I gotta say one of my favorite things about using BuildBox is being able to do this process smoothly. At the same time, I'm super curious what other game engines and their process when it comes to uploading to the App Store and the Play Store. I can tell you my first time doing this probably took longer, but the more you do it, the better you get. Just how it works. Keep diligent notes on the process. I hope the growing pains that I went through will be helpful for you when you are submitting to the App Store. It's a beautiful thing to have your game on the App Store so anybody can download it and play it. I guess the next thing is to market your game and yeah, I don't know how to do that either, but I'll figure it out when I get there. If you like this kind of content, don't forget to like and subscribe below. If you want to check out this game, it's available on the App Store and the Play Store. Until next time, stay safe and peace.